Hello, I am David W. Parker, and this is Programming Today I Learned. This is going to be the third episode in Rails. We're continuing to set up devise with JWTs. Um, if you are not, not familiar with JWTs, they're JavaScript web tokens. You can learn all about them on Google. We may cover them at another time, but for now, just be, know that we're going to use that as our way of authentic, authenticating against uh, the user um, object, somebody who's logging in, we will use JWTs within any kind of mobile apps we have, as well as our consumer web apps. And Devise will be providing a lot of that out of the box, but we'll also be using a different gem, Devise JWT, that expands upon Devise and provides a lot of functionality for us. And we can go ahead and take a look at that. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. So you can see the first thing we're going to take a look at is we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and expand on devise RB. So we have a lot of options on here. I do recommend reading through most of this. It's a lot to read. However, if you don't read it, you will never know what it all does. I'm not going to go ahead and read every single thing for you right now. I'm just going to show you what we are using for devise JWT. So I just go ahead and at the very, 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 very bottom here, I went ahead and threw that on. So we have a new config block that's provided for uh, the JWT, device JWT. And as you recall, we added that to our gem file last time and installed it already. And it's gonna go ahead and take a secret and it's gonna come from an environment variable and you can call it whatever you'd like. We wanna have a dispatch requests. So this is where new JWTs are gonna be allowed to be um, authorized from. So if a request comes from somewhere else, then we know that we shouldn't be issuing JWTs. And same thing with revoking JWTs, we wanna have a specific way for them to be revoked and removed. So this is a post and forward slash sign in, as well as a delete request at forward slash sign out. The expiration time is how long are these JWTs valid? And we're gonna use an AUD header, and this is what we're gonna call it. And the reason for this is we wanna keep track of each individual device that the user is logged in as because we're going to go ahead and provide them with the functionality to log out specific devices once they are logged in. It's a nice little security thing and it's just kind of fun to do. Next up, we're just going to go over here and you see I just kind of cleaned this up before I have confirmable, deleted the extra comments, and I added this line for JWT authenticatable as well as the revocation strategy, which is the self. Now, to look at that, that's going to be under this user's allow list. So I like to go ahead and organize my code into concerns. Um, whether or not that's your style of doing things is up to you. You could put this in lib or services or some other place. Um, for me, this is a concern of the user. So I have a user's folder here. And as I build out more models, I like to do it by the models rather than the type. And if there's a shared one, I might put it under like a shared or something. Uh, so we could see here what this looks like. We'll go ahead and do, go into the details on this in just a moment. Next up, we're going to go ahead and we have to create uh, for what I'm going to do with JWTs is we're going to use an allow list. The nice thing is that this library provides uh, blacklists, uh, allow lists, and in fact, let's go ahead and jump over here real quick and open it up. In fact, I already had it open here. So you can see we have different revocation strategies. Um, so you can have a deny list. It used to be called a blacklist. Now it's a deny, deny list and now an allow list. And you're going to go ahead and choose your strategy. I like allow lists because it's a lot more forthcoming of what is allowed and you can revoke each individual one. Um, I'm going to let you read each of these strategies and how you want to do it. Um, you know, for example, the deny list is an example of a list of revoked tokens as opposed to a list of allowed tokens. So you can kind of explore this. This is what the default table provides to you. It's a JWTI, an AUD. Uh, exp and then your user object so let's go ahead and jump back to that real quick and i'll show you what i have done in mine so i have here and this would be user um we have the user reference 
we have JTI, I am saying AUD. So this is basically saying if it's from this device, this is gonna be the specific device identifier um, in the expiration is for us. And then I've added a few extra things that I'm gonna store on here. The remote IP, the operating system, browser and device data. And I will be displaying those back to users again and they can revoke individual JWTs as they wish. Um, I've already done this within my application, Listen Addict. Um, if you want to see an example of this, you know, so if I go ahead and sign in here, I'll just show you real quick of what it looks like. So I go over to my settings, devices. You can see I have Windows here. Chrome, IP address, sign in date. And then I also have my Android here, Chrome, IP address, sign in date. So I can log out my other devices. So that's kind of the example of what that would be used for. So let's go ahead and take a look at this allow listed JWT. You could see that it's just basically a uh, empty model at the moment. Now let's go back to this concern. So this is gonna be you can not have to override all of these things in the concern. If we go back here, you can see um, it just basically needs to do something on dispatch. They cover the other stuff. I actually like to have this uh, in here just so I can see what it's doing. But this is basically the library that the uh, revocation strategy for is using within the allow list. So this is basically more or less the same code. And you can go ahead and take a look at that other library on GitHub if you would rather see what it's doing or just let it be. But I'm overriding it here just so I can see it and keep be aware of it. And then on dispatch, this is where I wanted to do. So you can go ahead and change this how you wish. But basically, I'm checking to see uh, if they have a previous token. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new token based on their AUD or unknown if I don't have certain information from the front end. And if they're both present, I want to update uh, based off the new token based off the previous one. And this is just a way for me to hook into these other fields that I have personally uh, wanted. And so this is a very, very simplistic way to have JWTs. It already works right out of the box. We're going to get into a lot more details. There's a lot, a few things missing, but we're going to go ahead and provide a test in a couple of episodes and show what we actually need to fill in the gap of making sure that we can log in and have access to certain resources as a user um, versus if you're logged out and you don't have access to some. So we'll be getting into that very shortly. So hopefully this is helpful for you to take a look at this device JWT library. And like I said before, we're going to get into the nitty gritty pretty soon. Thanks.